Oh, you again. Well, you caught me. I'm here developing film. Yes, film. You know, sometimes when I used to develop film, I'd wake up and smell the chemistry on my hands, and I love the smell of fix in the morning. And back then, we didn't need computers, we didn't need Photoshop, we had faces on our film. We just developed and went about our business. Now, what I'm going to show you is how that process was done. Because it may be a thing of the past someday, so we're going to record it here on this camera right now. So, here's part of the process. First of all, I need some rubber gloves. There's a lot of chemistry involved when you develop film. So, I'm protecting myself these days. And my hair. So, now I'm going to pour in chemicals. I'm going to take the temperature of the chemicals. I'm going to agitate the film. And after about 10 minutes, voila! I have some pictures. Now, what I want to tell you is what you have in your digital camera really isn't that different than what goes on here. In fact, everything in the digital world is based on the original film development. Everything's still the same in photography. Photography is painting with light, drawing with light, and so the lens, the apertures, the shutter speeds, it's all the same. But now what happens here is translated to your digital negative or your raw image. So what I want to tell you is that what you're about to learn is just slightly differs from this because once this is finished that image is on there and it can't really be changed in, except in the print process but with camera raw you can develop your settings and that's what it's called in camera raw or fix your hair whichever you prefer but once you develop your settings you can then also undevelop your digital negative and that's what I want to show you you can't undevelop this. Whew, might have blinded myself there. So once I finish all this and I get my negatives, I am finished with the process. But with the digital negative, you have a lot more options in terms of changes, settings, recourse to your original source material. And so that's what I want you to learn from this video. And the film is done with that. So what we're about to do here is a type of development that is done to the digital negatives or your camera raw files um, in through the computer as a as a batch process, which will make your life really easy. And so a lot of people have the question, okay, the camera image can't be written over. It's a read-only image. And until they experience how to revert back to the original, it kind of never solidifies. And so once we do this exercise, you'll see that your camera raw image is always in its first sort of undeveloped negative state. Um, and you can always go right back to that. And that's what I love about it. So first of all, let's take a look at these images. Right now we're in light table view. And let me go smaller here so you can see them all. And um, we've already done a few changes to them. I lighten them up. Um, I also batch rename them so they all have new names. And so even a batch rename is a type of development. Any sort of process that you do to your picture, and it, I know it seems sort of strange, but even the renaming is going to generate an XMP file. So the way that I defined if the camera raw image is developed or not developed is if it is attached to a XP or an XMP file. 
So that file is the text file that tells your unchangeable camera raw image what the changes are. So basically all the changes are stored in that XMP file. And that's why the image and the XMP file have to travel together. Otherwise you will lose all your development. Those things are not attached, not until you bring them into Photoshop. When you turn it into a JPEG or a TIFF or a PSD, then those developments merge with the image and you lose your XMP file. So just to give you a visual on this, I'm going to hide bridge for a second and open up the folder that those images we were just looking at are located on my desktop. And here you'll see all these weird files. And you can see that these are all XMPs and all of them correlate to the images down below. So you've got this mass of XMPs, images down below, and they show up that way when I'm in thumbnail view. If I switch just to list view, you get a better sense of how they relate to each other. So I've got garage one, raw file, and then after that, garage one, XMP. File, XMP. So you can see a little better how they should travel together. If you were going straight from the folder, you'd actually want to grab both of them. Now, technically in Bridge, when you drag the image to a folder, it seamlessly and invisibly um, transfers the XMP file. But every once in a while I see glitches, and sometimes I actually transfer the images to a folder within the Bridge palette. Like I make a new folder, and then I transfer the images, just to make sure I'm bringing that XMP file. And usually I, I don't find a glitch. If I just move the image, it will bring the XMP. But you can always go to the folder and double check. And you want to make sure you have something that looks like that. So back to Bridge. And I'll open up these files. And let's take a look at these. I'm going to go to my horizontal film strip, my preferred mode for the most part. Um, and I'm going to make some radical changes to these images. Like right now I just have a few subtle changes, but I want some changes, real big bulky changes so that you can see what it looks like when I develop the negative and then the beauty of the camera raw file, unlike a negative, I can undevelop my negative. So I'm going to do our usual command A to select all. And then I'm going to do um, a uh, Command R, which got me into Camera Raw here. So Apple R or on the PC Control R. And then remember, you got to hit Select All again. Otherwise, you'll feel really embarrassed. You only worked on one image. And so let's see. I am going to. Let's say I change it to black and white because that's what we've been doing lately. So that's a real radical change. And take note, because this is really important, is right over here, I get this symbol. And that symbol is actually the one that represents that you have an XMP file. It's telling me that changes were made to that image. And just so you can see it, I'm also going to do a crop like we did in the last video. Simple crop, because I want you to see over here um, it also gives me a symbol. It's within Camera Raw. I think they felt it was really important that you knew that you cropped the image. Like that's a radical move, and there it is. We're even putting a symbol there to tell you. So, and let's see. Let's do something else. Um, how about split toning? Split toning was a really cool. Um, when you used to do it the old way, you'd actually have to dip your print in, like, let's say, a sepia tone, which is really smelly. So let's let's do like a sepia tone. Let's see. And I have to turn up the saturation. So I'm getting like kind of a yellow antique feel here. And then and then what you would do is dip your and maybe I'll darken it a little. How's that? Um then you would dip your negative or your I'm sorry, your print in another tray that had something like selenium toner which would give you a blue in your shadows. So you get sort of a 
goldish with a blue undertone. And that was really the sort of the traditional split toning that a lot of photographers used to do. Let's see, how extreme do I want to make this? How about that so you can really see it? Okay, and then remember I could kind of go through and look at my negatives and see if I like how I compose them. This could take me a while. I could get way involved in this. So I'm going to lighten all of them up again. Okay, so I've made some major changes here. I split toned the image. I turned it into grayscale. I cropped the image up here. And, uh, and you know what? I might lighten them all again, too. Just a little lighter so you can really see the effects of that split toning. Maybe bring in a little more black for contrast. Okay, so we made a lot of changes here. And I'm going to hit Done. And if I'm not, I'm seeing the image come up. So that means I have a high quality thumbnail chosen. If you don't see that, remember you right click and go down and see how it says generate quick thumbnail. What that means is that I'm on high quality already. Otherwise I'd see high quality thumbnail. If you see both, that means some of your negatives are quick thumbnails. It's like a mixed batch. So we usually want to look at our images with the high quality thumbnail so we can see what we've done. Hmm, that looks pretty cool actually sort of amazing what you can do with this on these metal images that works really nicely so anyway okay I'm getting all involved here um, so now I've made all these changes and you can see down here on the bottom there we go um, that I've got those dual symbols that I made a crop and I have settings where I've changed things so let me go to light table and see how you see those settings again right there. But in light table, it's easier to see what I'm doing here. Okay, now this is the coolest thing. Um, I can take all these images now. Like, let's say I printed some of these and I thought, you know what? My client really wants these in color. They didn't like the old feel of this, they wanted the bright punch of the blue. And all of a sudden I'm in a panic. Like I change them all. Is this going to be a pain to have to bring them all back? The answer is no. Watch this. I'm going to Command A, select all of them, Apple A. I'm going to right click it. And, and this is the easiest way to do it. There are other ways. Um, but right click and I'm going to go down to this really handy menu here, which is called Develop Settings. Remember, we're talking about developing. And I'm going to just say, clear those darn settings. So I hit clear settings. And slowly but surely, the whole thing is cleared. Nada. Isn't that amazing? Now I could right click it go back to develop settings and say previous conversion which is what I just did you want to be careful when you hit that one that you know what your conversion was and it brings it all back so let's talk about another thing um, actually I'm gonna get rid of this I want to go back to the color just for the drama so it's so fun when that happens look at that so cool. So you could do it one at a time. You could do the whole batch. The only reason the whole batch is working here is because I did a command A, select all. A lot of times what happens to me is I will open just one image in camera raw. So I'm going to hit command R, open it up in camera raw. And then I will make some changes. So let's say I lighten it up. Get a little darker. We'll go to our usual grayscale. So let's say you've just changed one. You hit done. And then I could do previous settings, 
you know, we just did that. So I could convert all the rest of these with previous settings, or let's say it's a day or two later. And I've got, you know, one image that I got exactly the way I wanted it. And then I realized, you know what, I want to see all of them that way. This is really handy too. You do a right click, develop settings, and this is really tricky. All you do is go copy settings. This is literally a copy and paste, but you copy and paste your development. So I could say copy settings, and then I could just go to the next one, right click it, and here's our territory, develop settings, paste settings. And now this is really cool. If I had, let's say I did my black and white conversion and I did split toning on the first one and then I didn't want it, I could just uncheck split toning. So in other words, this gives me a list of all the options in the camera palette and I can pick and choose at this point which ones I want to paste on to the next image. I think that's brilliant. Anyway, so I click OK. And there it is, it pasted this, the setting from this image, onto the setting of this image. And there's so many times I work on one image and then I want to make those changes to other images. That's a really easy way to do it. Now, I could get really greedy and just click on the first one and select, and I was holding down shift, by the way, and clicked on the first one and then the last one here to select everything else. Remember, I've already copied that black and white setting. So now I just right click it, develop settings, and go to paste settings. I want to use everything I did before. And there we go. They're all just turning to my original setting. Won't that save you a lot of time? So, so much for getting your hands dirty and chemicals all over them. Just a click of the button right and left and look what you get. So next time you're complaining about your computer or sitting in a nice comfortable chair, think about this and what you have to do. Whoa! And what you have to do to develop your negatives in a dark room and enjoy your air conditioning, your snacks, your pillows, and your slippers. That's all I have to say. Thanks a lot.